high character, top kind of top level style of personality. Um, really, really intelligent. Uh, really enjoyed um, the meetings that we've had with him. Um, he's a great fit for us and for that running back room. Um, does a lot of things well, and I think he's a, he's a, going to really be able to help us. Yeah, I don't, I don't, it's hard to put a label on a guy like that at this point. Um, you know, I think he's just a good runner. You know, it's whatever scheme they've run in, in college, you know, there'll be some similarities. We'll have some things he's never done before. But um, yeah, I think he's a good. You know, all these guys are running out of the shotgun these days too, so you get a good feel for for his ability to do that. But um, yeah, I think he's got ability to kind of run all the schemes personally. We'll see. There's not a limited tape on pass protection on some of these guys. Um, again, you, you just try to hope you find a guy that uh, is willing to do that. Um, he's smart enough to understand the scheme and the and where that fits for him and how his role in it. Um, but I, I think that that's always an area for young backs that have to come in and, and earn that right to be able to protect. Um, and he's going to be no different. He'll have to learn it and figure it out as he goes and, and hopefully he can ascend into a role that's that's helpful in protection, but uh, nothing that says that he can't do it. How do you guys see him being paired with Joe Mixon in the backfield? Yeah, I mean, we just need guys that can carry the ball. You know, Joe can't take every rep um, and he's been he's been a productive ball carrier, so he'll be able to spell Joe when he's needed. Um, you know, we'll have, we'll have roles for those guys as they determine them, you know. Got a lot of um, hope and um, excitement about Travion Williams and what he did in limited roles last year. And, and obviously Chris Evans is still here as a guy that we've, we've felt really good about, particularly in the past game. So um, as competition, as depth, as a guy that can carry the ball, it's proven effective. Um, and those guys, will, they'll, they'll be battling it out for, for that third back on, on game day. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what's that's what drew us to him in the first place. That's why we felt really good about him. And at this spot, there's a handful of good backs that are still left out there that we like. But he um, he's got great production. He's got good speed, and he's been able to to make miss and make long runs. And um, that part was attractive about his tape. What about catch out of the backfield? Does he have pretty good ability to do that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a skill that, you know, we, we test these guys' route trees and everything that says on tape, he'd be an effective pass catcher. Um, he's, he's still, I think, a, a better runner than he is a catcher at this point, but um, he's got the skills to, to perform in the passing game. Justin, what has stuck out about his qualities and, uh, on tape and meeting him that uh, you think would be a good fit here? Yeah, I mean, uh, I just like Brian said, you see his speed, you see vision. Uh, he's got good patience as a runner. He's a really good ball carrier. Uh, but to me, what stood out to me, what separated him from everybody else to me was when you have a conversation with him, he's an extremely high character guy, really high football IQ. Uh, he was honestly one of my favorite guys to, to meet with throughout this whole process at the combine and in Zoom meetings uh, afterwards as well. He's, he's just an all around great football player. I think he's going to be a great fit in the locker room, obviously a great fit in, uh, in my room. Um, but you have a conversation with him, you know right away he's he's about his business. He's uh, he's a football guy, extremely high character, um, and selfishly as a coach, that's the type of guy you want to work with. Um, so I think it'd be a great addition. Instinct's a big thing, also with running back, obviously, to, to pair with vision. How are his instincts? Yeah, I mean, again, I, I think he's just an all-around really good ball carrier. He's got vision, he's got instincts. Um, and then again, he's, he's got good top end speed to hit a home run. And I, I think that's something that we need in the room. Just a two part question. Some of the knocks on him are, you know, how much he did in college, how much wear that could potentially be on his body and ball protection. Did you guys view either of those two things as things that are correctable or where are you guys at with those two specific things? Yeah, I, I think there's something that's, uh, I mean, you can control that, you know. Um, there's some things you can't you can't control how tall you are, how fast you are, but how you take care of the football. There's something that you can control, um, and that's at every level. And that's that's everybody in our room right now. Specifically, we talk about that uh, daily. We preach it, so um, I don't see that being an issue or anything different. Uh, that's something that we're just going to continue to to work on uh, with him and everybody else in the room. Rob, when you looked at running backs across rounds, like were there specific skills you were prioritizing the most? Or you were just looking for the uh, the best, you know, back, you know, could 
got different groups, right? Yeah, the back the the draft was was full of uh, a lot of different types of backs. Um, there was some guys uh, that that weren't as good of ball carriers, weren't going to carry the load for you as a as a first second down, but really dynamic in the pass game. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, for example. Um, those guys are, are really, really good players. There's a lot of guys that excelled uh, in the protection scheme. There's a couple of guys that fit that role really well. Maybe they weren't as good a ball carriers as some of the other guys. Um, there's some really good heavy-handed big backs that were available. There's some smaller, speedier backs that are available. And really, at the end of the day, it's, it's a preference. There's going to be teams that like guys for a lot of different reasons. Um, I thought it was a really relatively deep draft at running back. I mean, there was a lot of good players that – that we would have felt comfortable with at, at a lot of different points in the draft. Um, still, as it goes on, there's still guys on our board that we liked. Um, and we just felt Chase was, was the best of that group that was on our board currently. And, uh, but there's some good players, and there's, it's, it's just a, it's what's your, what, as a team, as an organization, you know, what are you looking for for your room? Um, and there's a lot of guys that fit different roles. So uh, there's always, always things you're looking for, pass pro, pass game, ability to carry the ball. Um, and and ev not every back checks all three of those things. Um, some of them check one or two. Some might just check one. Um, but there's there's a lot of different variations in what people are looking for and what fits uh, different teams. And, and we just felt really good about Chase's ability to carry the ball, uh, his production, uh, and his personality, and his character to fit for us what we were looking for. And um, was the right time and place for us to, to pick him. Yeah, I mean, any productive college running back is, is probably going to have a lot of carries uh, just because, you know, a lot of times there's one of them and they, they hand the ball to that guy as much as possible because it helps them win football games and that's all the, uh, the people in charge there really care about. You know, they're trying to win football games. And um, there's probably an argument to be made for as much if a guy's carry the ball a ton and, and you're worried about wear and tear. But I don't that doesn't really concern me. It's probably the last thing I would look at when I'm evaluating a running back prospect. Um, I know there is a small factor in it. It does matter to some degree. Um, obviously, guys that have l the minimal wear and tear always feel better for their longevity. But um, at the end of the day, we're, we're trying to find the, the best player. And if he's got a bunch of carries and a bunch of yards, um, that's OK with me at the end of the day. Yeah. So kind of to piggyback on that, well, well you were going to. No, go ahead. Yeah, okay. good. I mean, kind of to piggyback on that a little bit, would, given the amount of carries that he had at a, at a high level, if he needed to come in and, and get a good amount of workload early as a rookie, does it help that he had so many carries in college to really know what that responsibility is like? You can answer that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. I think at the end of the day, period, you're looking for production. Um, just kind of piggyback on what Brian said, I, I don't think you can um, – I don't think a guy producing at a high level for two years back-to-back, -back, uh, that, that's not a knock for me. Um, I know, I know you, uh, you want guys to be fresh and, and healthy at the end of the day. <laughs> Come on, Hobson. <laughs> um, no, but I, I think the level of production that he's had in back-to-back -back years, that's, that's, uh, just gives us confidence that we know he can come in and do it. Justin, um, like Brian was talking about different types of running backs earlier, it seems like, is he the kind of chase, the kind of guy that like complements a little bit of a different skill set to what Travion and Chris have? Yeah, I, I think uh, and some of that is going to be, you know, still to be determined uh, in training camp and OTAs and preseason. But, um, yeah, I think everybody's got their own role. Um, everybody excels at one thing. And uh, obviously you want to have a guy or a couple of guys that excel at as, as many things as possible. I think he's a guy that um, it sends possibly to be one of those guys. He's a really good ball carrier. Um, you know, any college running back, Coming into the league, pass protection is going to be the knock. They, they, they've got to learn it, um, you know, figuring out protections and, and third down looks and all this stuff. It takes time. Uh, so I, I don't think that's as big of a knock as, uh, as what it may seem. But uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm excited to see what he, what he can do and, and how he ascends uh, in the offense.
No, yeah, I think when you see his numbers at the combine and you watch the tape, um, it makes sense because he's explosive. I mean, you, you see the, I think it was a 40 inch vertical. You also see, uh, you know, his, his shuttles and his 225. Like you, he's got, he's got some twitch to him. He's got strength and he's got good top end speed. And you turn on the tape and you're like, ah, yeah, that makes sense. I see it. It shows up. That's what you want to see. You want to see a guy who tests well. Uh, and then his numbers that he, he tests at the combine that shows up on tape, uh, and, and they translate to, to production on the field. He's like low center of gravity, contact balance type guy with that, you know, five nine and a half, or whatever, and two, what is he like two fifteen? I mean, is he one of those kind of guys? And then, yeah. And then yards after contact kind of guy. Yeah, he, he's a guy that's going to finish forward. Um, yeah, low center of gravity. Uh, I, I think. Uh, you know, he's a guy that's, that's tough to tackle. Yeah, he's got good top end speed, but he's a tough runner too. He's going to finish forward. You have a, Brian, you feel you have a lot of different style running backs in that room now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I, I, I like the makeup of the room. I knew we needed to add one at some point uh, during the draft and weren't, weren't sure what that was going to look like or where that was going to be. Um, obviously, I had high regard for Chase kind of all the way through the process. Uh, and turns out that it, he was he was there at the, at the right spot for us. Um, but I like the makeup of the room in general. Uh, I think we have guys that have a nice blend of NFL experience. Um, obviously, I mean, Joe Mixon's been a fantastic player for a lot of years now. So there's, you know what Joe brings to the table. Uh, Travion, I think, is an ascending player. Uh, I think we've, we've invested a lot of time and energy in the Travion. I think he's made the requisite improvements. And that when he had opportunities last year, he performed well. Uh, so hope to see as he gets more opportunities uh, to perform even better. Uh, same thing with Chris Evans. You know, Chris has been a, a little bit of a limited role player for us as a pass game running back, but um, he's got great hands. He's got really good ball skills as, as a back out of the backfield, and um, hopefully we'll see some some improvement as a ball carrier uh, in these games in the preseason and uh, for a chance to him to make a push too. So um, it's a room that's got some diverse skill sets. Guys have got a lot of different ways to do uh, the job, um, and I think that we have guys that have been productive in their careers as well. You know, Travion was a – Led the SEC in rushing two years in a row, I think. So um, we got guys that know how to do the job, and, and I'm excited about that. Brian, you mentioned like pre-draft process. How, how much did you interact with them? You know, or sit down with them uh, specifically? Between Justin, I mean, how many you had what? You had the combine, combine and then Zoom, yeah, Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you have any one-on-one -on -one with them? One-on-one, -on -one, no. Mm -mm. Nope. With, um, with the way the Too many guys for me to <laughs> stay on top of. <laughs> Right now, like P. Ryan was more than a third down back, but he was your third down back last year. With the guys you have, do you see a specific third down back? Will it be a rotation? Kind of how do you see that? We find out. Um, that's kind of the fun part, you know. Uh, Samaje was proven. Uh, he was proven in that role. He was proven as a protector. Uh, he's a very experienced football player, um, and that's I think evident by the fact that there was places that wanted him to to ultimately be almost a starting caliber back for him in Denver, and so. Um, he earned that right, but he he performed well in that role. He earned that the he earned that that contract, that ability to go to have that playtime increase for him as he saw it. So um, hard to replace that player with with guys that haven't done what he's done. Um, so we have guys that are a little bit unproven in that regard. Obviously, Chase is coming in as a rookie. Travion's got limited reps. Chris has limited reps. Um, so it's going to be a it's. Work in progress, and we're going to have to find that guy, and someone's going to have to step up and uh, rise to that occasion for us.